elements of political economy by james mill seventeen seventy three to eighteen thirty six first chapter collection six this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org elements of political economy chapter one production the distinction between what is done by labor and what is done by nature is very often obscured a few words therefore are necessary to fix the meaning of terms labor produces its desired effect only by conspiring with the laws of nature there is no commodity or thing produced for consumption which labor affects in any other way than by cooperating with the laws of nature it is found that the agency of man can be traced to very simple elements he can in fact do nothing more than produce motion he can move things towards one another and he can separate them from one another the properties of matter perform all the rest he moves ignited iron to a portion of gunpowder and an explosion takes place he moves the seed to the ground and vegetation commences he separates the plant from the ground and vegetation ceases why or how these effects take place he is ignorant he has only ascertained by experience that if he performs such and such motions such and such effects will follow in strictness of speech it is matter itself which produces the effects all that men can do is to place the objects of nature in a certain position the tailor when he makes a coat the farmer when he produces corn do the same things exactly each makes motions and the properties of matter do the rest it would be absurd to ask to which of any two effects the properties of matter contribute the most seeing they contribute everything after certain portions of matter are placed in a certain position most of the objects which man desires are the effect not of one operation but of a series of operations requiring the lapse of a certain time a quantity of food and of such other things as during that time are used by the men who labor is necessary for the existence of the labor not only labor therefore but the articles necessary for the maintenance of labor are requisite to production it often happens that labor is employed upon certain materials which are more or less costly to produce the woolen manufacturer must have his wool the carpenter must have his wood the blacksmith his iron and other producers the raw material each of his particular commodity labor may be also very much in many cases promoted by the use of certain machines the man who scratched upon the earth with his nails or with a stick was very much aided when he obtained the use of a spade the man who dug with a spade was very much aided when he obtained the use of a plough the use of instruments has been carried much farther in manufacturing than agricultural operations from the spindle and distaff the distance is immense to the vast and operose machinery which fills a modern factory the food and other articles consumed by the laborers the raw material on which they operate and the instruments of all sorts which are employed in aiding their labors are denominated capital the requisites to production then are two labor and capital it most frequently happens that the persons who are willing to bestow their labor are poor and not possessed of so much as even food sufficient to maintain them during the series of operations which are required to complete the commodity on which they are employed still more seldom are they possessed with any of the more costly machinery 
which contributes on a great scale to produce the commodities which men desire to consume a distribution accordingly takes place of the persons who contribute to production into two classes the one the class of laborers the other the class of capitalists the one the class who bestow the labor the other the class who furnish the food the raw material and the instruments of all sorts animate or inanimate simple or complex which are employed in producing the effect in the employment of labor and machinery it is often found that the effects can be increased by skillful distribution by separating all those operations which have any tendency to impede one another by bringing together all those operations which can be made in any way to aid one another as men in general cannot perform many different operations with the same quickness and dexterity with which they can by practice learn to perform a few it is always an advantage to limit as much as possible the number of operations imposed upon each for dividing labor and distributing the powers of men and machinery to the greatest advantage it is in most cases necessary to operate upon a large scale in other words to produce the commodities in great masses it is this advantage which gives existence to the great manufactories a few of which placed in the most convenient situations sometimes supply not one country but many countries with as much as they desire of the commodity produced End of chapter one of Elements of Political Economy by James Mill, seventeen seventy three to eighteen thirty six.